We are Luminous Figure Painters. Welcome. This is the second in the painting tutorial series dedicated to the putrescent legion of chaos space marines known as the Death Guard. Today I'll show you how to paint a plague marine of the putrid choir Victorium, the rotting cacophony on march. Now let's light our lamps and grab our brushes. First we'll prime our model in Vallejo Acrylics Gray Primer. Allow that to dry for 15 minutes, then base out the model in Vallejo Game Air Sick Green. Then spray a coat of Vallejo Model Air Duck Egg Green at about a 45 degree angle. Then we'll spray Citadel's Coelio green shade into the recesses of the model to cool down the green. Base out the tubes on the model with Vallejo model colors burnt red. Now we'll put a base coat of Vallejo model colors dark sea blue or green on the cape. Then mix in white and burnt red to create a nice gray. Add progressively more white to this color while dry brushing less and less of the highlights. Try to be a touch messy with this and get some cool te uh, tears into the fabric and give it lots of texture. Base coat the gun casing in Vallejo Extra Opaque Charcoal, then highlight with a quick dry brush of that by adding a touch of white. Now let's get some texture on the tube with burnt red mixed with that duck egg green we used earlier. Add a little more duck, duck egg green after the first pass and you'll start to get some nice harmony between your colors. Base the growths in Vallejo Extra Opaque Khaki. We're going to go buck wild with this detail, so know that you can get off at any of these stops. I took quite a bit of time playing with colors and textures here. Glaze toward the tip of the growths with Citadel's Seraphim Sepia. Try to dab off the excess shade with a paper towel when you're glazing so that you don't get a big buildup of color in the wrong places. We'll repeat that step with Nuln Oil, then mix in a little bit of black paint like Scale 75's black. We just want to speed up the glaze with that addition, but keep it thin still. Next, glaze Vallejo Game Colors Bone White down toward the base of the growths and onto the demonic faces. Keep it thin and be patient. When you've established that color, you can go in and highlight with a little bit of more pure bone white, which would be a little bit more opaque. Now bring some ivory into the mix and just highlight the details and add texture to the growths with striations and scratches. We'll now base the tongues of these creepers with Vallejo Extra Opaque Warm Gray and Violet mixed at about a 1 to 1 ratio. Highlight the tongues with Rackarth Flesh Flayed One, and Pallid Witch Flesh from Citadel. Get some cold tones or bruises in with a recess shade of slightly thinned Drakenhof Nightshade. Let's now start basing the teeth throughout the model over a black foundation with Citadel's Rackarth Flesh. 
We'll then wash that with Nuln Oil Gloss. Let that dry and rebase with Rackarth Flesh. Then highlight with Pallid Witch and Ivory. Look at the maggots on that meat. Paint them with Bone White and Ivory. Another mundane and easy to miss feature. Unless you have a lot of maggots on your model. We can now go back to the Demonic Mouth and hit the lips with Pallid Witch Flesh and Carolberg Crimson for an irritated look. Now let's get on with the metals, which are always fun to do with Nurgle. Base the trim on the armor and all the little rivets with scale 75 Victorian brass. Base out the sword and the decoration on the helmet and some tubes with Viejo Metal Colors Burnt Iron and give it a messy highlight by dress, uh, brushing on Viejo Metal Colors Silver. Now paint those clanging bells with Citadel's Warplock Bronze and do another messy highlight with Brass Scorpion or Psychorax Bronze. This is a good time for a gloss varnish which will both protect your painting uh, thus far and break up the surface tension for the trudging, slowly approaching wash stage. Allow this 15 minutes to 12 hours to dry and cure. We can now apply Ammo by MIGS Blue for Panzer Gray Wash with an airbrush or bristle brush. I thought this was a nice cool color to portray a colder green, and I'm right. You know I'm right about this. Dab off the excess with a wool dauber and mineral spirits. When that gets too big for the details, go and grab a cotton swab. When that's too big, use your brush to clean up the smaller stuff. This is literally the best part, in my opinion. Let's give those horns some slime. This is a bit of an enamel wet blending exercise. Grab slimy grime light from Ammo by MIG and spread it in a wider area, about one third of the way up the growths and the surrounding area. Then grab slimy grime dark and get into that uh, with the recesses. Blend that up while they're both wet, then dab off the excess, excesses to show a little bit more of that bright ivory. Gross. As always, when we're working with enamels, it's best to use a light dabbing motion so that we give the colors a little bit more character. Grab some Trax Wash by Ammo by Mig and wash it all over the iron we laid down earlier. Don't use too much like I did or it'll start to build up poorly. In much the same way as the slimy grime, we'll sort of wet blend dark rust deposits and light rust deposits. I used some of the dried up portions of the light rust in my bottle to get that chalky, chunky look of heavy rust. Use a dabbing motion, yet again, to get a mottled, crappy look to the rust. As soon as we're done with that, we'll add a little bit of streaking to the pits and holes in the armor with Ammo's Streaking Grime for Winter Vehicles. Dab off the excess like we do with White Spirits from Windsor and Newton. One of the final steps to do with our brush is the verdigris on the brass. Hit it with some slightly thinned, with mineral spirits, cerulean and viridian from Winsor & Newton. Then mix up a very light gray and add that to your turquoise to use as a highlight. Stipple and dab off the excess with spirits. I really like this part and it definitely brings the look back to a cooler palette after the warm rust. My only regret when painting this part was not adding some texture like Citadel's Typhus Corrosion to get that crusty feel. Oh well, live and learn. 
and then dye. After that, we can move on to adding pigment fixer to the eyes and whatever pustules you might have on the model to give that crusted over mucosal look. I added AK Interactive's pigment fixer along with light and yellow dark ochre from Vallejo pigment powders. After that was done and cleaned off just a touch, I added Army Painter's disgusting slime effect to get that gross, fresh puss. Puss look. Puss, not puss. We can now go back to those teeth again with some glossy black recess shades and glazes. Whatever you used before will be good, but you will want something that's going to show up. So that's it with the weathering. Now I'm going to show you how to paint the OSL. And the crowd goes wild! <sighs> Start out by using some air thinner and flow improver to reduce more titanium white ink in your airbrush, but also save some extra to come back to it in a cup or something. I'll also note that it's good practice to add some matte medium to these mixes as inks and fluorescent paints can be very glossy when layered up. At about 10 psi, spray that white on the source of light, as well as the spots on the model that will catch and reflect said light. Now we'll thin some Viejo Game Ink Red and glaze over that in several layers until it's really strong and very saturated in chroma. Now repeat these two steps, but try to focus more on the brightest bits in the recesses, getting to the core of the light. Now we'll thin down some more white ink and wash it into the recesses using a little Lamian medium from Citadel. Let that dry and come back over it with a glaze of Viejo Model Air Fluorescent Red. You should glaze over the white and a little of the red ink we already laid down. Work really thin and pay attention to how the light will reflect off various surfaces such as metal or cloth, as well as the distance of the objects from the source of light. The closer a an object is to the light, the brighter it will reflect. The rest of the video is me messing around with that last step and blending in the effect. So nice. What skill. And with that, we can start the cacophony. Isn't that disgusting? Base up that putrescent choir member however you like and add pigment powders to the bottom of the model to tie it all in. That's all for now. I hope you liked this tutorial and found it educational. Stay tuned for more in the coming weeks. In the meantime, check out my link tree to follow me on social media accounts, drop me a like, add a comment, subscribe and ring the bell to get notifications. Until next time, have a safe journey and make sure to bring a light. Oh, nobody cares. No, not even me. And I'm your dad. No, I don't care. Don't you dare jump up here. Don't. Yeah.
cheesecake, Kieran. <laughs>